there it is, folks. And that ain't brass. That ain't aluminum. That ain't lead. That is silver. It doesn't even look American. What is that? What is this thing? Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On the road again, but not going too far. Just going back over to my honey hole. I'm going up to uh, Relic Roundup where I always go and uh, I always seem to find something, not every time. A lot of times I go out there and I hunt two or three hours and find nothing at all. But then there's other times I go out there and I'll find one or two good items. So it takes about a week's worth of digging just to get a video's worth of uh, filming. But anyway, it's a kind of cloudy day, rain's coming in, so I figure I get a kind of an earlier start. Get over there and see what we can find. My objective today is to go back over the areas that I've detected and go in different directions, go slower, listen deeper, and dig every little iffy target. And then I'm gonna focus on doing some areas that I have not hit at all. You know, just like they say, a yard is never hunted out. Well, Relic Roundup is never hunted out either because the area that I'm hunting is over 200 yards big, 200, two football fields big. And so there's a lot, a lot of areas to, uh, to cover. So just kind of working it methodically, just working uh, different areas and then doing some meandering as well. So anyway, I don't have too much further to go, so I will see you out in the Relic Roundup. looking at it's about the size of two football fields and at one time in the early 1900s before the oil boom came into this city there were there there was two sawmills one sawmill was up here kind of over to there and one sawmill is down here where I'm at the lumber yard sawmill and according to the map and then I don't know if you can see it but just right through the middle up there is a bucket turned upside down and that's where an oil well was and the other oil well was down here so when the oil boom came in in the uh, late 20s early 30s this became an oil field so it's got a, a lot of oil field stuff in it and then they cleared out the sawmill they cleared out the oil field and then this just became nothing but trees kind of like this right here this is the side i'm waiting on them to clear right now and clear all that out so they've been shredding these trees up they put the like a nursery you can tell all the buckets out here it was like a tree farm nursery that they never farmed and they just let them grow and then they brought a shredder in and you can see the stuff that i'm i'm dealing with right here nothing but shreds just mulch they mulched it all up and so there's a lot of activity over here through the years and it's very very large so you're always finding something, but they're few and far between. So just envision that sawmill right out there. Years later, envision all the oil field workers, no oil well, and now the tree farm, and now it's shredded up and we can swing through here. And so I come through here and pluck out the good treasures. Let's see if we can find some. All right, hunting with my Equinox today, and uh, we're gonna be on multiple frequency. We're gonna be on park one. That's, gonna, that's my default settings every time. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do some noise cancellation because I'm right here beside some power lines. All right, and the ground balance, we're going to leave there at the same. Volume is going to be the same. Threshold, I don't like running a threshold on this. Uh, target tone at 5, except reject at negative 9. And speed recovery, recovery speed is going to be at 5. We're going to check our sensitivity. A lot of trash out here, so I'll put it down about 20. And so we are ready to rock and roll. Let's get it. Well, decided to come back out here at Relic Roundup today. And uh, Dig and Doc Holiday came out to meet me. And uh, we're going to see what we can find. The, few, the finds have been here. They're just few and far between. But we're going to keep hunting these areas that we haven't covered up very well and kind of find the hot spots and get into them, see what we can come up with. Dig and Doc Holiday, we should call him. And he is saying he's got him a Merc. So let's go check him out. Yeah, just kind of working my way through all this mulch. 
got a pretty little. Oh, you did. 25 model there. What was it ringing up? Uh, 27, 28. Uh, more so just the tone sounded more quality. A lot of uh, the wine caps out here, you get that, yeah. that choppy up and down, but good looking though. All right, we'll take it, man. Yeah. Congratulations. Let's keep swinging, see if we can find another one. I'm over here oh, yeah. kind of working the same area that Hunter was working in. <laughs> And uh, we're getting the coins and some good hot tones here. And I just got a 29 to a 30 down about eight inches deep and popped it out. Just started screaming. Hunter came over here. Check out what this is. Yeah, check that out, guys. That's my fifth one of these I've dug. That is a heart heel plate. And that's a woman's. That's a ladies of the night yeah, heel plate. That's a ball. If I can find the picture, I used to have a picture of this on a, on a lady's boot. I'll see if I can put up, the, up that put that picture up right now but check that out in great condition too oh my goodness. man check that out there mr doc holiday i love it look at that that is the heart is that the, is awesome yeah the heart is the cool one man check that out you can't beat that i love digging these old heel plates like that i've got the clover i've got the heart and uh i've got the star I don't have, I think there's like five or six different types, but I, here's another heart right here. So we may be in a good spot right here. So keep, let's keep digging. I just said you got him an army button here. Yeah, it looks like a... Got Scoville on it? Scoville. Flip it over and let's get the front of it and we'll... Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's gonna be a great seal. 1902 to present. Let's see here, yep. 1902 to present. Let's get a picture of that. Congratulations. There's still stuff to be found out here, isn't it? Yes, sir. Thank you. Let's keep swinging. Well, I'm back out here at Relic Roundup today. Army man called me up and uh, meet me out here. He is uh, somewhere. Somewhere in those woods. I don't know where he's at now. But I just got out here and dug my first target. And it was a... Uh, Texas and Pacific Railroad bell seal and right through here is where the the train came down there was a loading dock for the lumber mill <laughs> I was just talking to army man over here and we couldn't see him earlier he's off in the woods I, I could hear him trampling around but I couldn't see him anywhere but anyway I came back over here I got a 1213 signal popped it up and it's a nickel let's see what kind it's going to be there it is right there. Yeah, it's going to be a buffalo. I don't know if y'all can tell on camera. There it is. Flip it over this way. And there will be the Indian man. Let's see if we can get a date on this one. I don't think so. Not on this one. Maybe once I clean it up a little bit more, we can get a date on it. Well, I did rub it down, clean it up enough to get a date. It's going to be a 1935. These things were made from 1913 to 1938, so this is a later buffalo. Um, don't see it on mint mark. It's too dirty to see that. But anyway, that's a guy's find. That puts it back in the 30s where everything else we've been kind of digging out here and earlier. Now let's just see if we can get some more silvers out of here. All right. Well, I'm back out here today at Relic Roundup and uh, just got a couple hours before I have to go to a Christmas party. So I thought I'd come out here and check out what I can find. And uh, the finds out here are, they're, they're still here. They're just very few and far between. So you may come out and hunt three hours and get one thing, but usually that one thing is a good thing. So I've been out here today for about 30 minutes and got a solid 12 signal, six inches deep. And uh, usually that's a buffalo nickel or I've dug a war nickel out of here. I haven't dug a bee nickel, but it looks like a nickel. It just popped it up. I'm not doing any live digs because it's just so much trash out here. It's unreal. It was a lumber mill and an oil field after that. So you can imagine how much trash is out here. So let me flip you around. Let me show you what I got. All right, it's right there. I think it's a nickel. Yeah, it's gonna be a nickel. I don't know what kind. Hoping for a V nickel for I can have a trifecta. Yep, 
Yep. Can't tell so far. Yeah, can you guys tell? I can't tell. I'm on V nickel. I'm looking for a V nickel. Let me uh, put my camera down. I've got two hands. I need a third hand here. See if we can't uh, put some water on this and see if we can't clean this up a little bit better and see what it is. Well, I cleaned it up, and I don't know if you can tell on the date on the very bottom. It's a 1904. And if you look real good, you can see the Lady Liberty looking to the left there. That's definitely a V nickel. So I've got my Jefferson nickel. I've got my Buffalo nickel. Now I've got my trifecta with a V nickel. That's awesome. It's pretty toasty though. It's uh, it is, which these things usually are. I can't even see the V on the back. I might clean it up a little bit better once I get in. But I can. 1904 is what that's going to say. I can see the one nine L zero and part of the four. All right, that's a good find. The way to start. It's worth coming out for just a few hours. All right, there's got to be some silver in here, so let's keep looking. Well, I'm back out here at Relic Roundup. I just got off work. It's about 3.30, so I got about an hour and a half to kind of piddle around out here. And we've hit this site so many times, and there's stuff out here that's just few and far between, but you got to listen for those iffy signals and deep signals. And that's what I was doing. I was just walking around. Back over here where I found that quarter spill, let me show you that. Right there is where I found that quarter spill in the barber in the SLQ right there. So I thought I would just hit this area a little bit better and listen for those real iffy sounds. I was getting a 2931, which out here it really doesn't mean too much because there's just a lot of trash out here. And so I didn't live dig it, so I popped it up and I see one dime, one dime in the coin ball. Check this out. I saw the imprint first. There it is. Still in that coin ball. There it is, one dime. So, it's going to have a mint mark on it. I don't know. Let's uh, see what this is going to be. Let's not rub it. <laughs> Let's just sit it up there. I don't have much water in my holy water, but it's time to break out the holy water. So let's see. She's going to be pretty eaten up just like all the other coins over here. You wipe it off of my pants. Oh yeah. Get it in focus for you guys. Oh, I just did make Barbara, didn't I? 1915. 1915. Hang on, let me change hands. Yeah, 1915. The last year was 1916 on these things. And I don't know if a, a 15 is a key mint or not. I have to look that up and see. No, no mint mark that I can tell. But yeah, that tells you there's still stuff out here. There's still stuff out here. Just got to go slow and listen for those faint, deep signals. This was about six inches deep, just like a 29 to a 31 on the Equinox. And uh, just so happened, boom, there it is. I got me a barber dime. All right, got some silver on this video. Let's go ahead and let's kind of just grid this area off really good. Because the last two times I've been out here, I have found nothing. And uh, so I was a little discouraged. So let's grid this off and see if we can't squeeze out another barber or an early Merc or something like that. Maybe even another quarter. So let's keep swinging. Wow, it's hot today. 76 degrees right now. And when you get that bug spray on you and sunscreen, it just makes it hotter. But uh, I'm back over here on the side, kind of where I found the coins. The coins are just a little bit further on up. They're on up there in that last group of trees. So I'm just kind of working this side. And got a very scratchy... 26 to a 31 high tone high pitch in there sometimes i get a 26 and it's not a high pitch and so i know it's going to be a piece of trash or something different not a coin but when you get that high tone in there it's a high, high number but a high pitch in there you know it's going to be something good and so i just popped it up see it in the coin ball let's show it to you 
All right, fell back in. Oh, let's see here. There it is. It's gonna be a mercury dime. I don't think I've dug a mercury over here. I know uh, uh, Hunter has dug a merc, and I don't think I've ever dug a merc out in the field here. But I'll take that. Check that out. Let's see what it's going to be. What do y'all think it's going to be? Mercury's from 1945 to 1916. Let's hope it's a 1916D. No, it looks too too new for a 1916. And that's going to be, can y'all read that? 19, I'm going to wipe that one here. Can y'all read it? 1944? Is that what that says? Yeah, 1944 Mercury Dime. Let's see if it's got a mint mark on it. Uh, I can't see a mint mark if it does. My eyes are not the best in the world. All right, well, there's still silver out here. I've been out here about 30 minutes. So let's sit her up here. Let's get a picture and let's keep on swinging. All right, not too far just where I got that to Mercury Dime. I was getting a solid 11, 11. 11, last time, 11, 12 is usually a V nickel and I just dug it up, check this out. There it is, right there. All these coins come out of here so, so toasty. Let's see what this is gonna be. I can't tell yet. Let's get in some more sunlight. It feels like a V-nickel. Let me do some cleaning up on it and let's see what this is going to be. All right, she's going to be a V-nickel. If you look real good, you might sit in the, in the sun there. You'll see the uh, Lady Liberty looking to the left. It's going to be so toasted, I don't think I'm going to get a date off of that one. The date will be right down at the bottom of the coin. And uh, right at the bottom, right there. But yeah, it's, she's pretty toast. Flip it this way. Should be a V right in there. Oh, I see the V. No. Let's see here. Alright, that looks like she's up right there. Uh, I'll try to do some more cleaning up when we get back to the house. But it's going to be a V-nickel. Yeah, ringing up 11. See how thin it is. It's not going to be old enough out here to be a, uh, a, uh, a shield nickel. But hey, that's my second V-nick out of here. All right, let's keep swinging. There's got to be more out here. I'm getting a 32, 37, 31. About 10 inches deep. I thought we'd try to live dig this and see what we can get. So let's uh, get our mark. All right, let's see what we come up with. See if I can live digging all these roots for you. A lot of, a lot of mulch. But that got that high pitch, like a. A coin would have, but it's jumpy. But some of them have been jumpy. Look at all these roots, that's what makes it so hard digging this stuff. I'm real close to where I found those barbers, I mean, those quarters. Looky there, looky there. I just saw it. Come on, let it be silver. Let it, it is silver. It's going to be a quarter. And we live dug this one. It's going to be a Washington quarter. I'll take a Washington quarter. Check that out. Check that out. What year is that going to be? 1940. 1940 Washington quarter and we live dug it and where am I in conjunction the barbers and the SOQ was right there 
and right in that little group of trees was that quarter spill and right toward those black things was that barber I dug yesterday and then right there is where I found that v-neck and when you listen to those high tones you can pick them out we live dug this quarter out of here and there's stuff to be found there's been uh, four other guys plus myself have been out here all over this place again and again and again and it's just have to get the right angle and hit their hear that right tone and you saw how it was jumping around from a 26 to a 37 to a 31 it ended up being a 31 and so all right so you dig them up sometimes it's not trash is it so let's get a picture let's keep on going i'm getting tired it's starting to warm up it's very humid got a 90 percent chance of thunderstorms here in a couple hours and so that humidity is really coming in so it's getting a solid 13 here and uh, sometimes the 13 is a nickel sometimes it's just some uh, type of metal but this time it looks like a i see a little silver tinge to it could be a war nickel so let's look at it together see it right there Yep, gonna be a war nickel. There's the there's the P. See it in the sun. Bring it on up. And nineteen forty two. Looks like a nineteen forty two. Nineteen forty two war nickel. I'll take it. That's three pieces of silver today. There's still stuff out here. Just got to swing slow and dig those iffy targets. There's just sometimes you come out here and you find nothing at all. Other times you'll get to hot spots. And uh, I've been trying to detect areas where it's humped up with a lot of mulch and leaves. And but normally we just swing around it. But it's paying off. Well, it's Sunday afternoon. I didn't have anything else to do. So I came back out here to Relic Roundup and kind of hit this again. I've just been kind of doing a little bit every day. Just a little bit, a couple hours. But you know, this place never ceases to amaze me. Just when you come out here, and I've been out here many times and didn't find anything, and sometimes you come out here and you just find one thing or two things, but usually when you find the one or two things, it's usually good something good. I was just getting like a 31, 33, jumping all around, I had a lower signal in there too, and so two signals, I'm thinking, oh, this is just going to be another big thing of brass, or it's going to be some lead, or something like that. been digging a lot of, a lot of uh, brass and lead and aluminum out of here, and like I'm just like, this is just trash. That's all it is. I didn't live dig it, and I just dug this up and popped it out. You're not going to believe what is down here. I don't even know what it is yet. Let's look at it together. And there it is, folks. When I popped it up, that's what I saw. I'm thinking, that ain't brass. That ain't aluminum. That ain't lead. That is silver. It doesn't even look American. What is that? What is this thing? Look at that. It's about... It's not quite as big as a half dollar, but it's bigger than a quarter. What in the world is that? I don't want to rub it, so let's just, uh, let's sit it right down here. And let's break out the holy water. Let's see what this is going to be. It's whole, check that out. Definitely not American but definitely silver. Let's just pop that. Yeah, let's just pop that. It just rained last night. So it's kind of wet. That is an amazing find. Look at that, it's 1900. It's 1900. Wow, let me rub this on my pants right quick and maybe we can read the lettering on the back of that thing. Got my little muddy fingers here. Gosh, hang on, hang on, hang on. All right, I'm just as excited as you are. 1900. Let me do some looking up online right quick and get back with you and, and is this Venezuela? Let me get back with you on this and let's see what this is gonna be. All right, this is a two Bolivars. It's a Venezuela coin made in 1900. That's what it says, United States of Venezuela in Spanish there. 
and it weighs 10 grams. I guess that says gram 10, 10 grams. That's what the, the site on the website I looked up said. 835. I don't know if that's 83.5% silver. No line, it said it was 90% silver. I got to do some more checking up. Look at the condition of this thing. Gosh, what's it doing here? That is, this place never ceases to amaze me. Check that out. Can you believe it? What's that doing here? I just wish I could just touch this coin right now and the history of this would come back. 1900, had, it was dropped. If it was dropped in the 1900s, had to have, to have something to do with the sawmill that was here. If it was later on, it would be the oil well. But uh, who knows? And why is it hold? It had to be a necklace or some type of souvenir or something like that. Uh, this thing is big. It's not as big as a half dollar, and it's not, uh, and it's not, it's, it's, it's bigger, smaller than a half dollar, larger than a quarter. I'll put a uh, picture up right here between that uh, quarter that I found yesterday and this and a half dollar that I found up in Wisconsin. I'll put that side by side and let you see that and uh, see the size comparison of that. But wow, I'm just, I just had to stop swinging and just think about this for a second. This is amazing. I've been here so many times, and uh, and you just hit a different direction. You find something different, and uh, I'm still on this one side of the of the field. That's where we're finding all the coins. Those group of trees in the very end down there is where I found right past that, where those black buckets are up to the right middle. Is where I found that barber. Came down a couple of videos ago. I found that that uh, uh, coin spill. Then I found that barber and the SLQ. Then I found that uh, um, V nickel. And then just right here, I found this uh, big old coin. This two Bolivars. I never dug one of those before. So, gosh, there's got to be more out here. Just going slow. Let's just go slow and dig all the iffy signals, see what else we can get. Wow, what a week. I had a really good time out at Relic Roundup this week. Found a lot of good things, but. Uh, I said a week it wasn't all in a day it took me I think six trips out there to do that and some days I went out there and didn't find anything at all and hunted two hours today and, and found uh, that one silver but like I said you might not find a lot but the one thing that you find is something really good I got everything laid out let me spin you around let me show you what I got all right here's all my trash that I dug you can sell lots of lead lots of brass lots of aluminum lots of copper just stuff you would find all in an old oil well or old home sites or storage buildings or something like that valves and there's more stuff out there in the ground i just reburied it because it's so big I, I would have to just keep all my pouch would get too heavy so i just set it out by a tree or uh, reburied it anyway this place you can do that out there well mine uh here's some of the notable mentions not really great finds but they're good got a couple of buckles well, that rang up really, really good. No key, part of an old saddle, I believe. Got a spoon and a knife, a couple of locks. Well, these rang up really good too. They're pretty thick and they're uh, brass. And another brass, that, that blew my ears off right there. Look how thick that is. That's all brass and rings up like a 40. And these are ringing up like 38s, really, really good. And here would be my treasures in this round, the TNP, Texas and Pacific. That's the uh, the spur that came off the tracks. It came down in the wooded section over there beside me, which uh, they're later on, they're going to clear that out, and we're going to get in there in that loading dock and see what's over there. I found uh, that Ladies of the Night Heart Hill Plate. And uh, I got one here that I want to put beside it. This is one that I dug in Louisiana at a plantation in a Civil War uh, area. So you can see the difference in the size of the hill. And you hear two stories. Some people say that they swear to these things or the ladies of the night. Some say no, they're Civil War, uh, part of the troops that they would wear when they got to water and they would put leave a mark here or the hole, uh, which it makes sense because this one is beveled. And in the story of the Civil War, the beveled ones like that would leave a mark down into the ground and that people would know where the troops were and stuff like that, who were there. This was ladies of the night. It's much thinner. I'll put a uh, picture if I haven't done that already in the video, I'll put a picture there showing you a boot, what that looks like. And uh, so I'm really excited about this. This makes my fifth one uh, hill plate. As I'm speaking right now, I'll go ahead and throw a, a video up real quick of all the hill plates. I've got three hearts, one star, one clover, and a couple of other styles of hill plates as well. So those are great finds. I get to add to my collection there. 
ended up getting three Wheaties. The oldest was a uh, 1916, I believe. I'm really surprised we haven't got any uh, Indian heads out here yet because we're digging old coins. I did get a 1942, and this is a 1942. This is a, v a war nickel, and this is one of the regular ones that year that came out. This is just a regular. It's not war nickel. Uh, so I got my trifecta plus this one be my quadfecta. I got a regular Jefferson, a Buffalo nickel, a 1907 V nickel, another V nickel I don't have a date on. Then my 1942 P or nickel. And you put this one over here beside it. It's a, you can see it's not, it's not, doesn't have the, the mint mark on it. It's just a regular 1942. I got a 1944 Mercury dime, a 1915 Barber dime, a 1940 Washington. That's one of the earlier ones, 1932, they first came out. And then check that out, guys. A 1902 Bolivars from the United States of Venezuela. That's how old that is. I think Venezuela is not a United States anymore. I think it's a, a dictatorship now, isn't it? But anyway, that is some good silver there. That's five pieces of silver that came out this time around. And I'm really excited about that. So, it was a good trip, good week. There's all the tr trash. And here's all the treasure. And like I always say, the greatest treasure isn't going out there and digging up some big old silver coins in the ground. Even though that's good, the greatest treasure is up in heaven, my friend. Keep searching, keep looking up. Until we meet again, I just wish everybody happy hunting and God bless.